This chapter, chapter 3, is talking about derivative. This video is the first in a series of videos that is meant to be an additional help and additional resources for you for chapter 3 in the course Calculus 1. What do you know about derivative? One interpretation is a geometric one for the derivatives that it's going to be the slope of the tangent line to the curve y is equal to f of x at a point. Now, it's going to be really handy for us if you could get a mathematical formula that will help us to be able to evaluate a derivative for a function. But how are we going to get this formula? Well, we are going to use the geometric meaning of the derivatives, the slope of the tangent line. But in order to get a formula for this slope, we will use the slope of the secant line to approximate the slope of the tangent line. As it's evident from the animation that you are seeing, if you want to approximate the slope of the tangent line to the curve y is equal to f of x at the point a f of a, then we look for another point on the curve with x coordinate close to the number a. This point is a plus h f of a plus h, where the absolute value of h is going to be a small real number. The line connected between the two points a f of a and a plus h f of a plus h is called the secant line. Now, as h approaches 0, the point a plus h f of a plus h will get closer and closer to the point a f of a on the curve, and the slope of the secant line will be a good approximation for the slope of the tangent line. To describe this motion of closeness, we will use the concept of limit, and we will conclude that the derivative of the function f at the number a, f prime of a, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, for the slope of the secant line, which is given by the quotient of the difference between y coordinate of the two points, f of a plus h minus f of a, divided by the difference between the x coordinate of the two points in the line, which is h. Now also, we need to make it easy for you. So, there is some certain rules that you could follow to make it much easier for you to be able to evaluate different kinds of expressions and functions. For example, the sum and the derivative rules, the power rules, product rules, quotient rules, and the chain rules. Also, we have certain famous functions that we use them a lot in applications, like trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions, exponential functions, logarithmic function, hyperbolic, and inverse hyperbolic functions. For each one of these functions, we are going to learn section by sections how to get their derivatives. There's two extra topics in this chapter, which is talking about derivative of inverse function. If you have a function f and you have its inverse, what other properties that the inverse function could carry from the function f itself? And most importantly, what is the relation between their derivatives? Well, the relation between the two derivatives is d over dx of f inverse of x is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse at the same point x. Also, there is another concept which is really going to be very important for us in terms of applications, because not all functions could be written explicitly. That's why we need something which is called implicit differentiation. What do we mean by implicit differentiations? Well, we have two types of equations. We could write them as explicit equations. That means we could separate the y in one side and a whole other expression that's involving x only in the other side, like in the first line. This is what we call it explicit equation. Now, the other way around is when the two variables x and y are not separated in either side of the equations. An example of this is the following equation. x cubed plus 3y squared ln of x minus 5 square root of y plus sine of the product y times x is equal to 0. Here, the left-hand side of the equation has a mixed expression between x and y. If we are interested in finding the derivative here, then we are going to use the concept of implicit differentiations. Here, we are going to treat y as a function of x, and then we are going to use the chain rule to be able to do, to differentiate this equation implicitly.
Now you will be able to answer this question. What is the derivative of the following functions? Now after you get about the concept of implicit differentiations, you will be able to answer this question. Find the dy over dx for this expression. This is what we have for this video. Now, please have a look at the other two videos which is exploring more the ideas of the derivatives of the inverse functions.